Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of a D1 athlete and a high school athlete pursuing a scholarship. With a wealth of experience to share, here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 245 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. This is part two of an interview with Cameron Wright. Last week's episode, episode 244, introduced Cameron. Cameron gives us a track and field perspective from a former college track and field coach and a perspective from a former All-American high jumper and former Olympic high jumper. Please go back and listen to episode 244 as we discuss the number of track and field scholarships available, how JUCO and international students are involved in track and field teams. We also get from Cameron what high school students need to do to get college coaches' attention and that the high school state championships are important events to a high school student athlete. Cameron and I pick up on this episode on how academics and character are important to college coaches. We also go into track and field camps, how bravery is needed to get on a coach's radar, and how hard work and positive attitude will take you far. Don't forget to stick around at the end for more advice from Recruit Me families. This is a section from the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship System. Now, let's talk some track and field with Cameron Wright. You know, the very, very top people that separate themselves probably aren't going to track and field at Missouri State at um, at SIU they're you know they're going to Florida or who, whoever the you know the, the national division one people are track and field is a game of inches or sec- seconds so you're going to have a pretty big list of people that can run the 100 yard dash in, or the 100 meters excuse me in wow. in a certain time and and a certain number you're going to have a big lump of people that can jump a certain height in high jump or in long jump so academics and character and stuff like that still come into play whenever you're recruiting a track and field person. Absolutely. I mean, ac- ac- academics are, are a huge part of, of things. You know, if you've got programs, let's say, like I'll just use Southern Illinois University. We have one of the top aviation programs in the entire country. We have one of the top automotive technology courses in the entire country. We have, we had certain programs that were top flight programs that were highly, highly sought out. We got kids that probably we had no business getting because they wanted to be a pilot. That was their dream. That was their goal. You know, SIU had a 747 for crying out loud that they they got to train, that they got to to fly and train on uh, after they got so old and through the program. We had in our automotive technology courses, we had like Ford that was, hiring our kids right out of college to nice jobs. We got kids that probably were quality type of kids that could go to anywhere they wanted, but we ended up getting them because of our academics. You you can also have programs at universities. Let's say you have a coach that was a former Olympian uh, like myself, or maybe somebody else was an Olympian in sprints. Like Carl Lewis, you know, Carl Lewis went to Houston. Houston was not a big, big track and field program. Carl Lewis went there and became their head coach. And then, and then Leroy Burrell went and is that is now there. Well, those were famous Olympic sprinters that were gold medalists, obviously. Whenever they were there, they started getting sprinters. Why? Because they wanted to train with King Carl, you know. And so you can have different people that are skilled and qualified and you can get better athletes than what the school normally gets if they have a top flight program in that area or coach or academic program that is really, really sought after by certain people. And I did not know that about the uh, aviation school at uh, SIU. So if they still have the 747 that was there when you were there, that means they've got a pretty good program because they haven't crashed it. That's right. That's true. And, and, And here's the thing. They compete at the national championships in aviation. Uh, every year and they win most of the time about every other year or every two out of every three years they win it emory riddle is another program that's very very big of course emory riddle is like a division two team or nai team 
Southern's a Division I program. So you've got some athletes that do aviation and they also do their, their sport at Southern. But the point is that high school student athletes and parents can do research to find those specialty programs that their kids might go into and, and that and that can attract them to that particular school where they may not have ever looked at that school before athletically or academically. No question. And that can go for engineering or Missouri Rollo, you know, one of the one of the best engineering programs in the country. Right. And right. if your kid wants to be an engineer, you know, maybe you end up going to Missouri Rollo. And it's a division two program, but it just depends on, you know, how serious you are about your life after college and and your career. Yep. Use your four years to set up the next 40 years is what they say. That's a great point. We, we talked about the high school season for track and field. What are some things that they can do in the off season or in the summer or in, are there camps that uh, you can go to in track and field to, to help make contacts with college coaches? If I were interested in going and competing in college, what I would start doing my sophomore, freshman year, I would start looking at about four or five colleges that I really wanted to go to. And I try to go to their camp because what ends up happening at these camps is they notice athletes that they spend a week with. What they'll be looking for is talent, obviously, but also what they'll be looking for is, and they'll get a very close up view of it. What kind of person are you? Are you a good person? Are you high maintenance? Do you come in and are you drama all the time? Coaches don't want to deal with drama. And so you go there, you're positive, you're happy, you're a good team player, you work hard. They can see all of that, trust me, in five days. And they'll know exactly. uh, They'll be watching you like a hawk if they're interested. And those things right there can really help you land a scholarship to some of these schools. I know sometimes we went to a baseball camp and uh, there might just be the the school that we went to, their coaches, or at some other camps, there would be schools from all different levels helping at the camp. Will you you find multiple levels of college coaches helping with uh, camps uh, there uh, for a track and field camp? I've not seen that so much, Brent. I'm just kind of noticing that with baseball now where those are being offered. Some of them are reasonable. Some of them are seem extremely high. For track, no, it's typically just a camp that they that that particular university puts on and brings people into. If you're looking at a camp and a school that you like, then you're gonna you're trying to impress that particular school and maybe not aren't gonna get a whole lot of exposure to any other schools. So that's that's good information. And then you're you know, that's when you kind of start recruiting then. I think that's important to figure out pretty quickly. What are some schools that you would be interested in going to? Do you want to stay local? Do you want to go off somewhere? Because those schools, you want to get your name out there. You want them to see you. You want them to notice you and have a chance to go go compete for that school. Cameron, uh, what advice would you give to a high school student athlete on and parents on how to get on the radar of a college coach other than what we've already talked about? Well, like what the program that you have, uh, recruit me. You got to get your you got to get noticed by these coaches. They have to see you. They have to know you're there. They don't know you're there. I guarantee you people don't know. I'll use my son for instance. Uh, they don't know he even exists. And so, uh, he's He's a junior in high school right now. It's time for him to start, uh, you know, getting noticed and, and getting the attention of these coaches, but they don't know exists. So how do you do that? Well, you got to get it. You got to get out there, send them the information, introduce yourself, but also sending uh, personal letters to the coach, uh, to the coaching staff, introducing yourself, stating why you're interested in that particular school. And uh, like I said before, you sending the transcripts and all that is, is extremely important. And starting a dialogue and saying, hey, I'm interested in your school. This is why I like your school. Your program, I think, would fit for me. A coach that's already l- lacking time. He's trying to spend time with his family. He's trying to win. He's trying to bring in more players. The last thing in the world these coaches have is time. By reaching out to them, you're helping them uh, save their time. So a student athlete also can go on uh, to like the school's website or even the conference's website, let's say, uh, and and find in track and field, you can find the distances somebody jumps or throws. You can find out the, the speed they they run a particular race and kind of compare that to uh, to what you do or what you think you're going to be able to do in the future. Also with track and field, you mentioned there's there's like three seasons in there. There's an indoor, outdoor, and cross country. So maybe you might be able to go and attend a, a track meet to 
kind of physically see what these athletes look like in college. That's exactly right. It's, it's almost like an unofficial visit in a way you, you may not be talking to the coach. But I just believe in bravery, though, too. Go introduce yourself to the coach at a meeting. You know, look for a time when you have an opportunity, when it's slow, maybe at the end of the meet, maybe at the beginning of the meet. Go, go up to them and say, hey, coach, my name is Cameron Wright. Uh, I'm an athlete over at Ozark, Missouri, and I'm interested in your program. I just want to come out and take a look at it. I competed at Ozark last year. I did this. I did that. I sent you uh, some information about myself and uh, just want you to know I'm, I'm very interested in your program. Uh, I hope you take a look at me. That right there, uh, these coaches, it, it's something different. It's something unique. Uh, the, the days of sitting back and waiting in your living room for the phone to ring or for the mail to come really are over because, you, you know, you need, to, you need to go out. If you're interested in competing in athletics, you need to go out and go get it. I like the way you put it, bravery. I had an episode called You Can't Get It If You Don't Ask. And uh, really, a student athlete, they can't get a hold of a coach and, and, and break any rules. Now, a coach may not be able to talk to you at that time. So if they kind of blow you off, you, you kind of, if you kind of know that it's a dead period or whatever, then you'll kind of understand. But there's really no time a student athlete can't contact a coach. A coach may not be able to contact that, that particular student athlete back at that time. So knowing the rules sometimes helps a little bit too, but you cannot break a rule by contacting a coach. Well, it, it shows a lot of maturity for a uh, 16, 17, 18 year old to go up to a a coach, a college coach, and, and introduce themselves. That that shows a lot of maturity. Yes. We've covered a lot of ground here. What are some other thoughts maybe maybe you could pass along to our Recruit Me families? Well, it's just, I think the important thing is for athletics is, is you know, you got one time in your life to go after this. And I would encourage these athletes that are going after their dreams to give everything that they've got. For the, for the parents, if you constantly are, have, are needing to encourage your athlete and tell them to get out and go do this and go do that and go practice and this and that, that's not a, that's not a good sign. And my, it's been my opinion that all good quality you know, athletes that go to college are pretty serious athletes that are out there working hard. Division one athletics is not for everybody. Uh, it's the best of the best. There's no shame in division two. There's no shame in division three. And there's no shame in NAIA. There's a great com competition there. And there's great people can balloon uh, at these levels as well. And all of a sudden, maybe the, the, these athletes are a little bit, you know, late bloomers. And that makes a big difference. But for the athletes out there, give it everything you have and go for it. Everybody would like to be successful. I could go to anybody, anybody walking the sidewalk and say, hey, how would you like to be an All-American? How would you like to be a conference champion? How would you like to be a national champion? And almost every person in the street would answer, well, that'd be great. I'd love that. But when you tell them what they have to do, you, you okay, you're going to have to go lift the weights. You're going to have to go do this. You're going to have to train five hours a day. You're going to have to do this. They're like, whoa, 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 I'm not interested that much in it. I thought I just could just show up and do it. Everybody would like to be great. You can't be great unless you give it everything you possibly have. That gives you the chance to be great. That's why I say it, it's very difficult to be a great athlete uh, at the Division One level or any level if you're not going to try your hardest. Coaches want to see kids that give it their maximum effort. The one thing that I want to truly impress upon the athletes out there or the families that are listening to pass on to their athletes is this. Attitude is everything. One bad apple can spoil the bunch. While I was at SIU, I had a couple of athletes that unfortunately I had to get rid of. They were a bad apple and they were at the time were spoiling the bunch. What I ended up doing, finding out is when I ended up getting rid of the bad apple, my whole team got better. Not because that person wasn't talented. In many cases, they might have been even my most talented athlete. When I got rid of, but when I got rid of the bad apple, all the bolts in the harbor started to sail a little bit higher. If it's it's very important that when you come into college and you you land wherever you're going to land, that you're a team player and that you put the team first and you and you give your utmost uh, and you try your absolute hardest. And that's not only important when you're doing athletics in college, but it's also important in life when you land at any job that you go to, any corporation, any self-startup business that you may have. It's attitude is everything. Positive attitude is infectious. 
a negative attitude is infectious. Well, and one thing that you don't have to worry about is uh, being infectious in a negative way because you're a very positive person and I, I, I've enjoyed getting to meet you and your family and I, I can see why you guys were successful uh, both in, in college and uh, and also here professionally as you uh, do your job. And I know your, your kids are going to do great in whatever endeavor that they do. And one reason I'm passionate about Recruit Me and my experience in college and hearing yours is, and what we want to try to pass along to our kids and hopefully other other kids is playing a sport in college and possibly beyond, which track and field kind of lends itself to possibly doing some stuff professionally or, or Olympics if you're, if you're elite, but just the experiences and the people that you meet and the places you get to go are something that you may not get to experience in a, in a normal college uh, setting, but you, but there's a big price to pay for it too. Also with your time and your, and your effort and your sweat and your tears. Absolutely. I mean, the travel when you're in college is, is, is so much fun. I mean, getting on the bus, getting on planes with your buddies, traveling all over the country, eating out at restaurants, getting to compete and go for your dreams. It's just, it's a wonderful life and it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, that's why we want to try to get people to experience what we got to experience and and uh, and what, what hopefully what our kids get to experience. So I appreciate your time and uh, hopefully we'll maybe have you on again if you come up with other things that we can talk about in track and field because it's a it's a wide open area that uh, I want to make sure that people understand that, that there are opportunities uh, coming out of high school to go get some college paid for and still compete and get a good education and track and field is, is a great avenue that maybe is overlooked a little bit. Oh, and I'll tell you something else, Brent, it's, it's, it could be more right. And here's the thing. Uh, a lot of times these basketball players and football players that are convinced they're going to be the next quarterback for uh, University of Missouri find out, hey, you know what? That's not going to happen. But I do have a great arm and I can chuck this javelin 200 feet and that'll get me a tuition scholarship. And they end up going and they throw in the javelin or a guy that's a high flyer, slam dunker, and he doesn't get any looks for college, but he gets up there and finds out, oh, my gosh, I can jump seven foot over the high jump and everybody wants you. So I, I thought for most of my high school career that I was going to be an NCAA Division One ba college basketball player. And lo and behold, uh, I started high jumping my sophomore year and I became an Olympian. And, you know, it just you just never know. I mean. Track and field is one of those one of those sports that sometimes you can even start later, and if you're naturally talented, oh, you you find out real quick if you can run or you can throw or you can jump. Well, Cameron, thank you very much, and uh, we'll let you go because well, the boys should be back from baseball practice, and we get to watch them a little bit this weekend play some baseball. So, looking forward to it. Absolutely. Go, well, thank go you for Ozark Tigers. Yeah, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Brent. Thank you to Cameron Wright for two great episodes that jumped into the recruiting world of track and field. If you have any comments or questions, please email them to brent at recruit-me.com. Also feel free to share this episode with other families you know, families that could use a jump in the recruiting process. Now let's continue advice from Recruit Me families. This advice is taken from a section of the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship System. This section is one of the many helpful and impactful resources that the Recruit Me 3.0 system provides. Go to recruit-me.com backslash system to see more on the system and get the end of school special for only $99. Here is advice from Stephen. The Recruit Me 3.0 is a great value for the money and with the college coaches online is a real time saver. The workbook and the related templates for writing letters and keeping track of correspondence have also been extremely helpful. Also, here's some information from Chris. As a parent and prospective student athlete, you must be willing to put in the time and effort to receive your reward. A college scholarship is a prize, and we intend on continuing to use the system. I have made contact with over 15 schools and have received responses from each with the exception of one within one week. We look forward to the day when we can say that the scholarship has been offered and accepted. Join me next week for another 15 minutes that will change your scholarship future.